Tommy, Hannah, hey, congratulations for Hunted, as it's uh, called here in the United States. And I believe it's called uh, Hounded uh, yeah. over there in um, England. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, which is kind of funny is because I think I think it means the same thing. I, I don't know why the title changed. <laughs> uh, the powers that be decided hunted for America. I don't know why either, to be honest. <laughs> it's, uh, all, it's always funny for uh, marketing purposes, I guess. But uh, let's start off with that uh, obligatory question that we always ask is what initially attracted you to this project? Um, ladies first, go for it, Hannah. Uh, yeah, so for me, it was, um, it. I mean, it's a piece. It has a, a really strong comment on the social class divide. Um, and I thought it was really interesting how that was played out, switching foxes in a fox hunt to teenagers uh, from an estate. And for me, Vix was a female working class character that nothing to do with her narrative was to do with beauty or sex. And she had some brains, which, you know, it was really important because, you know, as working class women, it's it's nice to see a woman with wit and in- intellect and, you know, some sort of drive. <clears throat> Excellent. What about for you, Tommy? What, what drew you into this project? I mean, I thought it was um, it was just a really exciting script, even even the very first draft that we that I was presented. It, um it it was as Hannah's just touched upon. It it was it was doing something in the subtext, which was talking about like the disparity between the rich and the poor and their attitudes towards each other. But on top of that, it was it was fun and harrowing at the same time. Like it was um, it felt um, adventurous. It sort of it reminded me of those sort of films that I grew up on, things like Stand by Me and things like those sort of movies where you take characters outside of their comfort zone and they go beyond the norms of where they're normally, where they normally go. Um, and obviously in this instance, it got, it's got extreme, it, extreme consequences, but yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was just, ex- it was a really exciting script. And um, obviously as a debut film, I wanted to make something that could entertain people and at the same time, hopefully leave them with a few thought, like, like a bit thought provoking. That is true. Hannah, is this your first uh, horror project uh, for yourself? And what was that experience for you? Yeah, it's my first horror. And um, my first uh, my first sort of part of the, the lead gang, you know, in a feature film. So it was really fun. Um, and Tommy gave us so much space to be able to, you know, create a, a real bond between characters and We'd always have a chat before every scene um, to know, like, because we didn't film chronologically, we needed to know where we were coming from at every stage because, you know, with a drama, the the arc might not be so dramatic. Um, And, uh, yeah, for for us, we needed to know exactly what had just happened, where they were at mentally and physically. Like, you know, if they'd just run ages or if they'd just been, for Vix, if she'd just been, you know, stabbed by a tree <laughs> so yeah <laughs> so so tommy she she said it was filmed um, non um, chronically um for for itself uh tell, tell us about the challenges out on on this on this project particularly like this is being your first feature film i mean um the the chat the, the the headline challenge was filming with hounds that aren't trained for film cameras that was definitely the headline challenge um because you can set the camera up and you think you know where the hounds are going to go and they even had a scent laid down which was for them to supposedly follow but those those are a bit like the dog in uh, in this, in up it's like the minute they see something else their heads <laughs> turn and they go somewhere it's like um so there was definitely a, a steep learning curve in terms of filming with them. And then, I mean, other additional challenges. I mean, obviously, we had a lot of locations. We were constantly moving. Like, I mean, we filmed on a on a large farm estate. Sorry. So, sorry. Two seconds. Can you go away, please? No. Sorry. Sorry, <laughs> dude. Um, 
um, we we're on a large uh, farm estate, um, and we were it was seven hundred acres of land. So we had a we had a lot of uh, moving around, and as you see from the film, we, like we never repeat the same locations really. It's all, so that was a, a major challenge because we we had a very tight schedule. We shot the whole thing in three weeks, um, so it was it was constantly constantly moving. I think nobody ever really got any rest time apart from go home, sleep, come back and do it all again. So so follow, following the sense of the hounds, so does uh, does piss, uh, I, I'm, that does not work? I'm assuming piss probably means something else in, in English. No, no, it's the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Um, no, I mean you can like, like they do. They have a, They have actually got like they do use a concentrated uh, fox scent uh, to lay onto the ground, but it it only excites them once or twice, and then you have to resort to other means. And our other means turned out to be uh, as their as their master of hounds informed us. He said they quite like bacon and sausages, so we would quite often just be throwing bacon and sausages in the direction we needed them to go, and at sometimes in certain scenes when we needed them to interact with humans, we were even hiding sausages or bacon in the actor's clothing. So the dogs would try and sniff it out. Wow. Now I, either of you, have you, um, either of you ever participated in a, you know, sort of like a fox hunt? I mean, um, here in America, we're not, we're not familiar with this, uh, you know, this game in, in its own way. No. Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, it, I mean, it, so so um, fox hunting actually got banned in 2004, I believe, um, which was quite a uh, political big deal here. It was like really, really covered in the news because it's such a long held tradition. And um, there was a lot of anger from uh, from from the people who liked to fox hunt. And um, so since 2004, fox hunting is technically illegal now they they are still allowed to go out and they lay the scent trail and the, to, in theory exercise the dogs mm -hmm. now a lot of a lot of critics will say well the foxes still get killed on those hunts um it's and there's a bit of a i mean there's a large gray area about what is legal and what is illegal in those in those situations we did actually attend one of those sent hunts uh to record some of the audio that is in the film uh after but that was after the filming process uh, not before well i guess uh in like in a film like this hu human hunting is technically also illegal so <laughs> well there there is actually a clause within the uh fox hunting ban that says the uh use of hounds to flush out unidentified mammals is 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 permitted like and by definition, they could probably argue that these four kids are unidentified mammals. <laughs> well, there we go. We did it. We did not know that. Uh, Hannah, how did you bond with the rest of the castmates there? Obviously, you didn't have a chance to uh, fox hunt or anything like that. But what was it a lot of fun out there being on that estate? Yeah, it was really fun. It was like a big playground, really. A bit of a scary one at times, obviously. But... Um... With regards to working with like emotional recall and sense memory, we we really were, uh, you know, there and we'd done, you know, if we were running from from the hounds, we filmed running from the hounds already. So we had that. So, yeah, and as, as cast members, we bonded really quickly because we had to. We were that was our friendship group. Um, but me and Malachi, especially, we we stayed up um, where we were staying and we'd we'd have lots of chats outside of the idea of the film just life chats and um we created this bond that came through you know in, in certain scenes and held us it came through and held us through times that were really deep and dark that we needed to get to because we had each other um <clears throat> yeah and I think he brought the the crocs trend back to the UK because crocs is now a thing again over here and I didn't you know we took so much we took the mick out of Malachi so much for wearing his crocs so yeah, heard it heard it from Malachi first. <laughs> <laughs> well, wow, that's that's excellent, Tommy. Um, this estate was it was it hard to lock down um, this estate? I'm I'm assuming that's not your place. That is not my place. That's for sure. Like, I mean, we filmed we filmed on um, we actually filmed across two different estates. So the the 
the manor house that you uh, that you see within the film that they go to get the to take the ceremonial knife from um, is actually uh, I think it's an 11th or 12th century manor house and um, it was uh, formerly the residence of the wicked lady Ferris who was a renowned highway woman from the 17th century I believe and um, even there's even been a film with Faye Dunaway playing her like in the 70s um, so that so that was uh, that had a, a large amount of land, which we filmed a lot of the a lot of the greener scenes on because the, a lot of their land is more kept, for want of a better word, and um, and then the the farm that we were um, filming on was seven hundred acres. I think I've said like, and and they they were really generous. They we I mean, obviously we reimbursed them for use of their land, but they literally gave us free reign over their land and said so long as no crops get destroyed in the making of this movie you can pretty much go wherever you want they showed us where the boundaries were on a map and they said go and play and they basically gave us this massive playground and like we're indebted to them because the the variety of landscape is due to that is is how much landscape there was on that farm and um i mean in terms of how hard it was to lock those down i mean we were very fortunate that like, they actually just were really excited by the idea of the film. So they wanted to get on board in, in both instances of both locations. And um, the, the manor house was actually the first and only manor house that we scouted because we just fell in love with it and they wanted to be a part of the filmmaking process. So we, we were able to do a deal with them and we didn't need to go looking for another manor house at all. Wow. Well, was it was it equally impressive for you as an act, actress, uh, Hannah, when when you get to go on these uh, set locations? Yeah, and it helps massively, you know, because you don't have to um, you don't have to imagine it. You're there, and physically, we were swimming through the river, and you know, running miles across fields and rerunning it and rerunning it. So it was, um, you know, the job was kind of done for you. In, wow, in a sense. So in a sense, you're uh, you're physically fit. You did your own stunts in in this film, then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it took me a couple of guys to get up the wall, but um, well, that's the point. Yeah, that was the point exactly. So, uh, you <laughs> we know, found, I meant we to found do a that. wall that was just that. yeah. We 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 found a wall that was just the right height that you can't just jump straight up it. Like, <laughs> yeah, you could get up it with a bit of effort. Yeah, but a lot easier for someone like, well, not Junior because his character, but a lot, a lot easier. If, I mean, I'm five foot three, so it was like a monster wall. <laughs> wow. And and was that was that river cold for yourself? I mean, that, yeah. that that's probably challenging. I, I, I can't imagine everything. All waters are cold over there. <laughs> yeah, yes. we didn't. We, we didn't. Once we were in, I mean, we we didn't get out but it, we you know the first that that first run we did was the first and only run that we did running down the um down the what we're trying to say the bank. Bank. The bank. Yeah. yeah down the river bank and we had um wetsuits on underneath our costumes but we did literally have to wade through there was like litter and um lots of like obviously old brambly stuff so we were literally wading through it and maybe we had to stop to redo little bits and poor ross like gulped to a whole mouthful of that water bless him <laughs> but um yeah yeah <laughs> now um Tom, tommy uh, let's talk with the rest of your cast um here because uh because we know the young people have a close uh, knit group but of course you have to uh, take a look at the villains themselves who uh who also has their own uh, close knit group uh you know led by samantha bond could you uh talk about uh that 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 side of it yeah, I mean, we like it's that classic thing that nobody thinks they are the villain. Like, and we talked a lot about that, and um, and and I I referenced like one of the things like I had a great chat with um James Lance who plays Hugo, and and talking about how they um a lot of aristocracy and uh the elite class they have a very strict code of behavior and are expected to behave in in specific ways and. One of the things that he said he really liked about the part and he wanted to explore was like, was um, when he was not in the company of his uncle or his sister, he got to behave perhaps more how his how his true character would behave, which is why you see the song and the dance at the farm and he's constantly trying to impress upon his son. And um, 
Yeah, I mean, it's that, it is that classic thing. You do have a conversation with the actors where you say, well, obviously you don't think you're the villain because a villain never thinks they're the villain if they're if, like, like, um, and we talked about like an invasion of, uh, an invasion, an, an eroding of, of respect is one thing we talked about. There, there, there was, there's for hundreds of years, the aristocracy in Britain have been heralded as this like sort of uh, height of ambition and a place that almost like, like the where everybody should be aiming at and and that that's been eroded for, whether or not through media or what th just through modern modern attitudes it's been eroded and I, I think we talked a lot about how that must feel to be almost deemed irrelevant now um and not know another way and um so that was sort of a lot a lot of the conversations we had i had with those actors was about this sort of invasion of um the new the new world for want of a better phrase in a in a way that the westerns represented like a western uh would show the railway as the as a symbol of modernism and um like an invasion of the old ways and all of that sort of stuff so those are the sort of things we were talking about that, that is true and and you brought up a good point about uh villains because you know in in this case um, it almost seems black and black and white that the aristocracy, the elites here, are are the villains. But if you really think about it, you know, Han Hannah was a part of technically a, a band of thieves, which in yeah. their own way, they're they're all, they're also somewhat villains. They're you know they're just seeking justice. What what do you think about that, Hannah? Yeah, um, Malachi said something really cool when we were talking about it, which was about um, you know how honor. And and honor to Catherine and um, the aristocrats. I always say aristocrats because the film is aristocrats. Um, them versus what uh, Vix and and Chad and the gang think of as honor is different. So it's it's you know based on their how they've been through life and how they perceive life to be. It's like the the metric at which they you know measure the value of honor. Is completely different. So to them, to, they don't think they're doing anything wrong. They're doing what they have to do to get bread on the table. But actually, like they should have never been there in the first place. Not that they should be killed for it, but yeah. Well, if they weren't there in the first place, then uh, we wouldn't have a movie. But this is a this is a ter terrific premise of a movie. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let let let's wrap things up. Uh, what's next uh, um, for for you both? Uh, let's start with Tommy. Um, so I, uh, before, before directing mm -hmm. Hounded, I was a, a film editor of, uh, film and TV drama. And at the moment I'm back doing some editing of some other, other projects, which I love doing. I love collaborating with other directors, um, and sort of, uh, in that sort of no man's land where anytime now Hounded will come out and hopefully it will have some sort of <laughs> impact. And I've got, I've got another couple of scripts in development with a few producers that I'm, that I'm already uh on good terms with having done projects with them as as an editor so there's a few things in development but um nothing in the immediate future sounds great and what about for you hannah gonna stick in the horror genre or moving on to something else no it's not it's it's more comedy comedy mystery is what i'm doing at the moment and it's a spin-off of death in paradise which is called it's called beyond paradise and it's um yeah, it's quite a popular series in in the UK, so that's cool. And then I'm also in a short film called Hard Times, and then early next year I go into filming for something I'm not allowed to say what it is. So, yeah, but it's cool. Well, as long as you're not uh, climbing over walls and running through rivers, I think <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> Tommy, Anna, thank you very much uh, for uh, speaking to us about uh, Hunted here in the United States, Hounded over there. Um, it, it is a very exciting, uh, you know, psychological, thrilling, action-packed uh, horror in, in its own way. So everyone should check it out. Thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you for having us. Thank you.